Congratulations, you decided to extend your fitness journey into the home by selecting a piece of quality fitness equipment. We often get asked the question, what's the best piece of fitness equipment? And today we're gonna to figure out what that is. What is the best piece of fitness equipment? Guess what? It's gonna be the one you use the most. I know it sounds facetious, but it's really true. It's a very personal decision, and we're gonna help you today kind of figure out some things that you need to consider when selecting a piece of fitness equipment that's going to um, be used a lot by you and everyone in the house. The first thing we're gonna talk about is space. Please do not put your piece of fitness equipment by a water heater, or in a dungeon-esque basement. It's just gonna end up being a dust collector and clothes hanger. Uh, other things to consider, especially when putting it in the basement, is ceiling heights. If you've got someone tall in the home and you're gonna get on an elliptical, you may not have enough vertical height to move forward with the usage. One thing I failed to mention with the, uh, the elliptical as it relates to space is there are some machines that fold. I'm standing by this pro form here, there's other other brands that make uh, folding ellipticals. And what's cool about a folding elliptical is you can get a full size stride length, 18 to 20 inches, in the same footprint as a recumbent bike. Here I come down, I simply just grab the stabilizer bar, bring it forward, it locks into place, and it scrunches down into the same footprint as a recumbent bike. So if you have limited space and you wanna use an elliptical, Folding can be an option. You definitely will lose quality a little bit because of what makes a folding elliptical. Uh, you know, it splits the frame into a couple pieces, it rotates. So you're gonna lose a little structural integrity, but it's a good option if, if you want a full size elliptical in a small space. All right, we're gonna continue our conversation on space. Uh, we're gonna use treadmills this time as an example. Everyone knows that there's non-folding treadmills, and then ones that fold. Pretty obvious, the folding does save space. Some folding treadmills though will come out at a pretty steep angle and actually take up more space than you think. Other treadmills will actually fold vertically. Um, another thing with treadmills, as it relates to space, is electricity. Some machines, like this one here, it's a commercial grade treadmill, requires 20 amp dedicated service. So you'll wanna make sure that you adapt to that treadmill. Um, they do sell adapters on Amazon, but for the circuit board, the health of the circuit board, we recommend putting in dedicated service. Uh, another thing you wanna make sure on is that you got it far enough from the wall so that you're not running into the wall, or there's not a wall on the back of the treadmill when you fold it down. In case you trip, stumble, fall, you don't wanna go shooting into the, the wall now, do you? We're here standing at the uh, free motion incline trainer and uh, I picked this one because there's a lot of advertisements on TV about incline trainers and how well they burn calories, so on and so forth, which is true. But we have to factor in the end users when making a decision, right? Because if you do, you're gonna use it a lot more frequently and you're gonna be on it a lot longer, i.e. you're gonna, that's the best piece of a fitness equipment, you're gonna use it more. So if you have bad knees and hips, for instance, and you get something like this, it may hurt, and what's gonna happen? You're not gonna use it. So make sure you get out and try some of these pieces before you buy, and don't just buy off of product reviews or what you see on infomercials. We talked earlier about physical limitations, bad knees and hips, for instance. Uh, the next obvious choice, if that is the case, is a recumbent bike. Uh, there are two basic types of recumbent bikes, ones with walk-through frames like this, and then the ones that you have to step over. A little bit older design, but they're still out there. With a walk-through frame, you can get through real easy. So if you have a bad knee or hip on something that is not a walk-through, you have to step over the machine to get on, and you may not even be able to mount the machine. Uh, next thing to do is see what the adjustment's like. Uh, is it easy or hard? This has a really nice mechanism where it adjusts not only the height, but the distance from the pedal. So once I get on the bike, 
I want a slight bend in my knee, just like that. I don't wanna be extended too much, okay? As I come through, I wanna be able to make sure that that knee injury, that hip injury, whatever it may be, I'm able to get through the range of motion smoothly as possible. If I'm jerking and I can't, or if there's pain and I can't get through, well then a recumbent bike isn't for you. I mean, you can check for alternate features where the uh, seat adjusts and opens your torso up, but if that still doesn't work and you're still experiencing pain coming through here, you're gonna have to look at a new step, a recumbent step or something of that nature that's a more special, specialized piece. All right, let's talk product research. It seems like every year more and more product research firms are coming to light on the internet and product research is just getting harder and harder. There are so many different review sites now and we don't know which ones are paid to say good things about product and which ones aren't. So really it comes down to old school methods. Going out to the store, finding the model you like, getting on it, trying it, all the users of the machine, and then making a decision based on that. Um, after that, you can back it up with some product research online and make sure that it's not one or two stars. But again, at the end of the day, stick with what you like. Uh, some really good websites to look at for product research is the fitness professor, that's fitprof.net, uh, for cardio, uh, treadmills, ellipticals, stuff like that, treadmillreviews.net, that's also a good one to try out. All right, last stop, we're gonna talk about uh, price. Uh, on our website, we do go into a little bit of detail of, on about value versus budget. Value, it just simply means you're getting a great price in relation to the machine you really want. Budget is literally, hey, I have X amount of dollars to spend. For instance, if I have $500 to spend, I'm probably not gonna get an Octane Q4700 for, for that amount of money. So you wanna set your expectations accordingly. If that's the case, if you are working with a low budget, we carry a lot of used pieces uh, that, will, that were $1,500 to $2,000 you know, five, six years ago. So that's a really good option. But for the more expensive machines, what I will say is definitely take advantage of our financing options, 0% interest. Uh, it allows you to divide the payment up at a reasonable amount at no interest to you. Well, that's it for today. We covered a handful of things and I hope it really helps you. I think if you really do consider all those things coming into your purchase and not focusing so much on the tech and spec of the machines, but the things around it. And that's kind of what I like to cover because it's things that people don't consider. If you consider those things, you're gonna be set up for success in the home. If not, it'll be a little bit more challenging. Uh, if you're looking for a good deal on a new or used piece, visit fitnesswarehousedeals.com.